Lot of Thoughts podcast. I'm Courtney. And I'm Anna. And I did that completely right without stumbling. I'd like to point that out, which kind of ruins it, but... I couldn't do it. I mean, I'm going to start charging for me to do... (laughs) Yeah, if you notice, I'm not the one to say any of the things. Like, what do you say? You say, if you have any problems with us, you don't even say that. You say something like... Comments, questions, complaints. couldn't do it. <laughs> if you have something to say to us, <laughs> message us at the Instagram thing. At the Instagram thing. That's so super. this is, yeah, all of that weight <laughs> is on Courtney. You know, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Um, we are going to take kind of, we're going to have an easy week this week because if you're like us, you've been kind of like, I don't know, it's been the past the whole year yeah. actually has just been very heavy. That sounds really stupid, but heavy. No, it has been heavy. It's not stupid at all. It's sometimes, I mean, we all know, sometimes you just need a, a yeah. breather. You need a break mm-hmm. from news and things that are going on. Which, when we decided to record this episode and what we're going to do, um, We actually had an episode coming out the previous week that was really, really current event heavy, and it did not make it up. I don't know if and when it will make it up. It's a a really, really long story why it's not going up yet, but um, either way, we thought this would be a good good break. I was about to say good wake, so like, is that for like dead people awake. I don't, I don't know. You tell me yeah, like, what, this, what it is Awake yet. is, oh yeah, no, that has nothing to do with oh, I thought you were going to do no. like a true crime thing. Although, well, I was, I was going to tell a true crime story that's local, but I needed more time for that. Okay. And I so. I have a couple local ones too. Oops. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to just start inter, intermittently doing these. Um, so basically, we both agreed we're going to steal this from Sheologians. They, every so often, just gonna say it because that's what happens every so often <laughs> they do these fun little episodes where they tell stories they tell a true crime story a story a mystery or just something you just like they didn't know until they started researching and we both love those episodes and also they're kind of fun to listen to whenever you've been listening yeah. to theology heavy current event heavy stuff all the time and then suddenly you're like let me learn the story of Elizabeth Holmes. That was the last one that they did. Did you listen to that one yet? Remind me. The bad, it's based on the bad blood, like Elizabeth Holmes and um, Ther- Theranos. I don't think something. I have listened it's to really it. It's really good. I feel like there are two types of people. There are people who will, like, enjoy this and the people who will not. So if you already know, like, you don't like this kind of stuff. You t- we're not gonna be. We're no. not gonna be offended. No, not don't, at all. You don't have to rate our podcast off of this episode. No, no. <laughs> this, is such- <laughs> this is not normal for us. Yeah. But we're gonna enjoy it, and we enjoyed not having to do as much heavy work this week. So first of all, we had two questions. Now a few weeks ago, actually, I feel, this, feel like this was like a month ago. I posted on our podcast page that we were going to be recording, and I said, anyone have any questions? And we got two questions that I remembered from back then, um, and we never answered them because we didn't record together. And so I'm going to just, we're going to throw these out there. Total fun questions. Do you prefer dresses or skirts? Um, Right off the bat, or right off the cuff, I would say dresses. I but agree. the reason I will say dresses is because I have yet to find a skirt that I can pull off that looks trendy uh-huh. and not homeschoolish. <laughs> like you're, you live on the prairie. Yeah, like, and I yeah. can say that because that's, I used to be that. Yeah. So, I've not given up and I really, you see, like, on Amazon, every once in a while I'll search, like, skirts or something and there are some cute Mm -hmm. skirts but I just know because I've done it like two or three times that if I order them I will get them and I will try to wear them the same way that the model did and somehow the same skirt will look fashionable on somebody Mm -hmm. and like not so good on me so you know what would be cute on you 
if you wore it like high waisted. Well, that's what I want to do. And then do. put a belt over it, and just yes. like even with like the t-shirt that's you're like wearing. That's exactly what you know. I want to do, but I've yet to figure out how to do it yet. I don't know if it's because I'm tall, like my length plays a factor. I don't know. Yeah. But off the cuff, definitely dresses. I like dresses. I like them more and more. I I know. I'm I'm with you. I didn't like them as a kid, and then now I get excited whenever I have a good, nice, comfortable dress. Me too. And I was like one of the LuLaRoe people. That's my type of dress. Like super flowy. That's like all you wore when you were pregnant. Yes. Like the entire Well, time. I couldn't wear pants for the last, yeah, that's for like the true. last three months of my pregnancy. That is another story for another day. Yeah. But, um, you need to yeah. clarify that a little bit. Oh, I had I had medical <laughs> issues. Just... I had medical issues that prevented me. That sounds really it weird sounds too. It sounds worse. Clarify for Okay. Me. <laughs> I had a problem. This is super weird. I feel you like have to is... keep clarifying okay. or, or so, they're going to be like, oh my. I had liver issues and something I was diagnosed, which I don't think it was the correct diagnosis. I think I really had le- liver issues um, and gallbladder issues that caused this. But I was diagnosed with pups which is basically a thing where you're uncontrollably itchy. <laughs> so I couldn't wear pants because I was itchy all the time. But, like, not funny no. itchy. No, I, like... Like, to the point of... Yeah, I couldn't sleep. I took yeah. Benadryl every night, which is probably why my kid is so <laughs> off. He's, no, I'm kidding. I love him. One day he's going to hear that his mom said he was... <laughs> no, I love him. He's, um, he's great. But I did have a rough end of my pregnancy, so that's and okay. You were yeller. I was. I, I got put on bed rest because I was jaundiced. Hence the reason why I think I actually had cholestasis, I think it's called. Yeah, it I, had to be some kind of liver thing too yeah. because you, you were, your eyes were getting yellow. Yeah, at the end. it was, it was pretty scary. He came a month early and that's, I feel like that was a really yeah, brief. I think you're you, your next baby should, you should have, like, a perfect pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like you're due <laughs> to at least not be itchy. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I would have taken nauseous 24-7 over itchy because you literally, you can't get to sleep. But <sighs> all that to say, I learned to love dresses when I was pregnant, and I still love them, and especially, like, if they have, like, a, a good high neck. I don't even know. I can't describe that over a podcast, but I wear, like, the same type of dresses. That pockets I, or no pockets? I mean, if the option is to have pockets, then yes. You? No. No? No, you know why, and I'll, t- I'll tell you why, even if you don't want to know. <laughs> I think, again, I think it's a height problem. The pockets hang right at my hips. Oh. Not below, on the legs, but right on my hips. And so it, like, and they never lay completely flat. Uh-huh. At least the dresses I've, maybe yeah. I'm buying the wrong pocketed dresses. But so it makes my, it gives, like, a couple inches yeah. on either side of my no, hips. And it looks really, like, frumpy. Yeah. So I have to say no, even though every girl I meet, they're like, dresses with pockets, dresses with pockets. Well, you are, like, you're tall. So, I think, like, yeah. I'm not tall. Maybe if I so. were tall, but they don't always yeah. have the tall option. Yeah. So. Nope, no pockets. So, you know, that's really weird that there's, like, a petite option, but, like, that's pretty regular, there, but is yeah. there an opposite that's well, regular? there is a tall option on a lot of things. Like, I shop Old Navy a lot, and they have a tall option. Ooh. I prefer to get my jeans from American Eagle because they have talls uh-huh. and extra talls. Oh, so okay. I get my jeans from there and then my other sister-in-law, she gets her jeans from there too because she's like six feet, six foot, six foot. Six and feet. I am just about five nine. Like I'm basically five nine. I'm a hair under five nine. And I, in case you really want to know, I'm five three. I yeah. think. I've probably shrunk with age. If I stand right next to <laughs> Courtney, time. I'm, like, looking down on her head. So. You know, there are pros and cons to both end. Yeah. We but just Lord did family. you beautiful. Yeah. Knit I mean, you together not, in your mother's womb. I'm not complaining. I'll say the, the time that my height has come in most handy is when I was pregnant because I didn't feel like I got overly huge because I was tall mm-hmm. and I had the room for a yeah. baby. And then, <laughs> well, this is just... This is helpful for other people, not me. 
I all the time have people in the store ask me to reach stuff for them. I'm that person that yeah. asks. So, so someone in the aisle, I can I can spot them before they even ask me because they look at me. And then they kind of like look at the thing they want, and then they look at me again, and I'm like, "What do you need? What do you? What can I reach for you?" And then you can turn that into a yeah. gospel opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I haven't yet, but yes, yes, that is true. Well, I remember whenever I went to go get Paul John's Buzz Lightyear pinata for his birthday party, and I stared up at it, and there was a guy that was shopping, and I was like, "Yep, can you please?" I've never had to ask anybody to reach me anything. That's crazy. I've had to like climb the shelves, it. man. Climb the shelves. I pretty much but. am happy with my height, except for sometimes with clothes. Yeah. I, it's that's, I mean, handy. well, it's, it's not the same, but like, because I'm on the shorter end, skinny jeans around my, and my ankles are small. So skinny uh, jeans don't cling to my ankles, uh, which they like skinny jeans on you are just like, yeah, right there. Well, my skinny jeans, if I don't get like talls though, mm-hmm. they're yeah. like capris. But if I do that, like one roll that's kind of trendy. Oh, so yeah. That yeah. has been very helpful for the tall girl, that uh-huh. roll trend. Thank you, Lord, because <laughs> that made me, ex- like, a lot of my jeans trendy. So. so, I mean, I don't know if this next question is going to get as much discussion, okay. because I know everybody cares about this. I forgot we were even talking about questions. <laughs> I was just talking. Mountain or beach? Oh, man. Oh, that is so hard for me, because... I love the beach when we're staying on the beach, Uh which I've only ever done once. And it was a different experience than having to drive to the beach. I do love the beach. But my husband and I just went to the mountains and, like, swam in a bunch of freezing cold, like, waterfall holes. Uh And we laid on these rocks that were, like, right next to the waterfall in the sun. And there was no sand and anything like that. There was... I had to say mountains. I just have to say mountains. I'm going to agree with you. Now, I like the beach. I, the same trip you're talking about, we went on the trip together where we stayed on the beach. Yes. And what happened was I stayed on the balcony in red like 90% of the time. And, and that was, is my happy place. Yeah. I enjoy looking at the ocean, watching it from afar, and reading a book. But in general, mountains is going to be the place. Yeah. I don't like the drive into the mountains, though. Oh my Ugh. word, me either. I'm prone to that sickness, Oh, you know? I got sick so much when we were doing that. Yeah. But it was worth it. It was worth it. But I feel like your opinion on this is super valid because in the same week, Anna went to both the I did. beach and the mountains. I don't know whose life I'm living right now, <laughs> but... <laughs> so, um... Beach is hard with kids. Oh, yes. Really hard. Which, with, with the mountains can be hard with kids, too, depending on what you do. But the, oh, man. I mean, Myra is five, so it's really not that bad. Uh-huh. She walk herself out there. Yeah. But, oh, we're going beach with a toddler. I don't September. know. Beach people, if any beach people, they're probably like, what is she talking about? Like, yeah. I have friends who live in Florida, and they go to the beach all the time with their Yeah, but little, then you're used kids. to it. Then you're used to yeah. it. That's different. And we're going to the beach for a week with my family in September. And I'm very anxious about it, but also there will be grandparents and aunts there. Yeah. So I also know, like, it's going to be okay. Do you have him, like, a long sleeve swimsuit top or something? Not yet. We're going to look into that, though. Yeah, and, like, hats and stuff so he don't get all burnt. Yep, because he's not... My kid is very, very, very pale. He's white. Takes after me. So, um, so yeah, we're just going to jump into this. This story um, just randomly hit me. I don't know how long it's going to take to tell me this. This might be really quick. I don't know. Um, if you have questions, okay. let me know. I, um, I work at a bookstore. I feel like I should be like, got Walls Books or Walls of Books and see if my boss will pay me extra for saying... Oh, advertising. I mean, his wife listens to the podcast, so... We don't, hey, have, if any, you hear we don't have any sponsors. I mean... Got walls? You want to sponsor? Sponsor us. <laughs> Abby's gonna be like, "Stop it, Courtney." <laughs> <laughs> no, um. So, I hear a lot of random stories throughout the day, and you know we hear about all the true crime stories because you know customers want to come in and talk to us, which is really cool. Um, and one of the series that was really popular, and I'm gonna guess you've heard of it, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, made into a movie. 
just very popular. Written by Stieg Larsson. I think that's how you say his name. They actually changed his name because his name was so close to another author's name. Um, but I can't remember what his name was before. But he was born August 15th of 1954 in Sweden. And, which I guess you could tell by the name. Um, and also, just random fact, because he's known for Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, which I have never read nor seen, it's not necessarily my type of thing, um, originally the translation of that from Swedish was Men Who Hate Women. Oh. Yeah, so okay. I think I think there's some, like, abuse and stuff, and, and which is why it's not my thing. Um, and it was actually published, all of it was published after he died. Oh, yeah. wow. So, um, it's just really interesting. So, when he was a kid, his father had to quit work because he got arsenic poisoning. Oh. Yeah, that's and so, awful. and his parents, I, I don't know quite the details on this, but they decided to send him to live with his grandparents. And he lived there until he was nine. Um, and then he started to attend the village school, and he would use, like, cross-country skis to get there. Um, yeah, so, snowy area of, um, I believe that was in Stockholm. I didn't write that down, so if that's wrong, don't judge me. Oh, I just cut off my notes. Hold on. <laughs> my computer freaked out. Okay, so his grandfather, which I think this is really interesting right now because we're hearing the term a lot. His grandfather was an anti-fascist which is, like, what Antifa claims to be or whatever. Um, and he actually protested against the Nazis during World War II, and he was confined for it. Oh, wow. So this is what Stieg grew up seeing. Um, his grandfather was very, very involved. But he actually started, which I found this interesting, he started writing sci-fi first. Um, he was very involved in, like, sci-fi conventions and everything. Um, I don't have any titles of what he wrote back then. Um, but Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is not sci-fi. Um, and he even did, like, magazine articles and short stories all relating to science fiction. N not true. But there was suddenly a shift. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm shaking my arm and I hit my step goal. Oh, <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> I can't help it. Do I have to take off my, um, because I, I talk with my hands. Um, so it's anyway. probably the same calorie burning as a step. Right. Yeah. You know. Um, so then suddenly his writing shifted to being more nonfiction, so political and journalistic. And remember, he was raised in that anti-fascist home. Um, so in 1974... For 16 months, he had to join the Swedish army. Um, so that was a mandatory conscription, um, and he trained as a mortarman. So um, I think it's, I always think about that, and I'm like, can you imagine being in the times of, like, a draft and everything, and you just not knowing? I guess Paul has asthma, so he, he would be safe, right, from that? So. But, like, I can't even imagine... So he was, like, forced to join the Swedish army. Um, which I feel like probably doesn't give you, like, a good view whenever you're forced into something. Um, so, so, unsurprisingly, when he got out, he actually um, started joining in rallies against the Vietnam War. And at that point, he joined a radical leftist group. Yeah, so went from the anti-fascist home to now, which, of course, radical leftist group, if we want to look today, would be Antifa. So, this was a lot more current than I remembered. I actually, whenever I was coming up with it, I was like, oh, he was like a spy or something. Which, he kind of, I'm going to get into that. So, um, in 1977, he went to Eritrea, which I believe is in, I feel like I should have... Yeah, it's in East Africa. It's a country in East Africa. This is my, like, no, this is my second favorite part of him. Because it's just weird. He trained a battalion of female gorillas on how to use grenades. Yeah. <laughs> Seems extremely random. Yeah, right? Um, but, don't worry, he had to quit because he had kidney disease. Yeah, this is this guy is really weird. 
like I said, this this might be quick. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, despite having kidney disease, he still went ahead and did independent research of right-wing extremism, and he wrote and spoke on it. And when I say research, he did do, a, as far as I know from what I read, he did do some, like, undercover work. Um, so much so that he was getting death threats on him. Um, which, it doesn't stop there. Okay, so, in 1995, he co-founded a Swedish anti-racist magazine called Expo. And that magazine, he actually, like, was the editor until he died. Um, so, which he died in November, November 19th of 2004. Um... And this is my favorite part. Not really. That sounds terrible with what I'm about to say. But just the part that, like, I read this and I, like, was like, what? He died after climbing the stairs. He had a heart attack. Um, which Wikipedia, which that was not my only source for this whole thing, I promise. But Wikipedia said his um, diet mainly consisted largely of cigarettes processed food, and copious amounts of coffee. Oh, wow. And so he went, there was like a, I, it called it like a lift ban in his office, and he went to climb the stairs and like died of a heart attack. Wow. Yeah, like, really weird. At that point, he had actually been living with Ava Gabrielson. So Ava, they met actually during a um, anti-Vietnam War rally. And um, they met, but they never got married because Swedish law, when you get married, your address has to be made public. Yeah, isn't that weird? Like, yeah. like really weird? So he was getting death threats the whole time. Uh, so they never got married because uh, he was okay. afraid he was going to get okay. killed. Um, Odd. So this is the weirdest part of it all. And this is... Just, yeah, this is the weirdest part. In 1977, okay, which would have been, as far as I know, that was after he met Ava, he wrote out a will giving everything he owned to the Socialist Party, um, which was called the Communist Workers League at that point. But it was unwitnessed, so it's not legal. Like, they can't actually use it. So, currently, there's still a dispute going on between Ava and his father and his brother um, as to who controls the legacy. Now, of course, all of his stuff was published posthumously, so after he died. Um, and there's even something she has, I can't remember if it was published, but at least she has access to his like last unfinished work. She, she has his laptop and refuses to give it up. To his father and his brother so she really has all of his work right there on the laptop but yeah they fight over his rights and, or the rights to his work because you can imagine like he died and then that's whenever his stuff got published which i don't know who made the money off of that at that point and that's when the movies were made was after he died um but definitely not the socialist party yeah. that's all i got um but yeah, I just thought it was really weird. And as you would imagine there'd be a lot of tension because she wasn't actually his wife, but obviously they were together for a significant amount of yeah. time. Yeah. Lived kind of like that. So I can imagine like the frustration between that, you know, the brother and the dad. Yeah. And yikes. A lot of authors have really weird histories. <laughs> That's how they That's like crazy. know what to write. Which. It makes you wonder, like, I don't want to read that book series. It's not something necessarily. So if someone else has read that book series and wants to share, like, is it? I didn't read it, but I remember when it was, like, hot. Yeah. Like, when the, everybody. The commercials would come on, and yeah. I would be like, I don't think so. That is really interesting. So that was, that. that's my, my tale. What's, that I, tell me his name again. Steak Larson. Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting if you go follow him. Um, there's a he has a biography on him, and then Ava also wrote an autobiography. Now I have to say, like I was talking about how I have like local true crime stories that take more research 
this was a quick one that I came up with. Um, so we'll have to do this again because it. Yeah. I mean, there was no reason anyone needed to know about Steve Larson, but now you do. So That's interesting. I don't ever know. Yeah. This. Now I have something to say to anyone. Who tells me they wrote that book? I mean, you're set up for a so, conversation. A I, cool one. Yeah, which the I... gorilla, train gorillas I to female gorillas to throw grenades. Well, it was like gorilla warfare. So not like the animal. We're going to cut that out. <laughs> I heard you saying that. I was like, wait a second. So... Can no. You say female gorillas. Female gorilla, like G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. Can I pull Courtney and say I'm tired? Uh, I've been I'll allow up since it. five a.m. I'll allow it. <laughs> well, I mean, you—you you couldn't perfect. know. You couldn't know what I was saying because well, you weren't I was seeing like, the word. Dang, that is—that's a weird thing. That's like but, extra bizarre. How did he get into that when he was so like politically? <laughs> I'm gonna stop. No, it's okay. And That's me every episode. Oh, I'm actually kind of happy because you make me sound less s- stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to cut it. You can keep it in because okay. it is kind of funny. It's precious. It's funny. No. Um. So either way, he did not train gorillas. It was That's gorillas. A, yeah, and you know, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy you told me that now because I would hate. To get to a, a conversation with like, somebody. trained gorillas. I was like, I didn't even know gorillas could really be trained. I mean, them. honestly, they probably so, could. I mean, well, have you seen Planet of the Apes? Yes. That freaks me I mean, me out. I don't believe in evolution, the but new, they also... The new one, for, right? Uh, the one with the guy I don't like. Who, well, that's... Oh, what's... He's the main guy. What's his name? I mean, the oh, one I don't like him! The, Oh, this is gonna hold on. I feel like it's the most recent ones. Yeah, he's or maybe not. We watched it for a college class. Isn't that kind of weird? Like, I'm trying to see because this is 2001. It wasn't 2001. When when was the most recent? Was it 2001? Two 2017. That sounds more. Wait, no, it wouldn't have been 2017. Um, oh, oh, here he is. Oh, I can barely remember his name. What's his name? What's his name? Oh, James Franco! Oh, did you know that James Franco, this is, I'm going to add this. Okay. James Franco writes poetry. I really, oh, really, I, I really don't, like. I don't remember his face. He's not a good actor. He's not a good poet. And yet. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Isn't he, like, not? He's not a great person. That's very, very, very true. And he, I know, let me tell you, I know so little about, like, actors. and But but not like I'm obsessed with their lives. Like, I don't know their names. So when you said that, I had to look it up. And I'm like, oh, I know who he is. Spider-Man, you know, whatever. Like, I know him. But I don't know the names of act- all actors. Like, I know, I know the main ones, obviously. But he wrote a poem about um, Barack Obama. Hold on. This is important to me now. Um, How he, old is he? He, he's he's like 5'11". And was... <laughs> we're sharing the essentials today. He's 42 years old. Oh, really? Yep. He does not look 42. He, so he wrote an inaugurational poem called Obama in Asheville. And, like, it's real weird. Like, I feel like I need to just read the beginning of it. Um, Obama in Asheville. Asheville, New- North Carolina. Ooh, it, sorry. It's making me try to pay to see this, and I don't really want to. Okay, um, Asheville, North Carolina is the birthplace of Thomas Wolfe and the sometime 
residents of F. Scott Fitzgerald. Where, when he visited Zelda at her institution, he stayed at Grove Park Inn, a grand stone edifice. On the phone once, Cormac McCarthy lamented the two added wings in the spa and marveled at the original structure. They pulled the stones from the mountains and brought them down on mules. Soon after his 40th birthday, Fitzgerald attempted suicide here, but couldn't shoot his own head. Oh, I feel like this is getting dark. Keep but going. I, <laughs> Don't stop now. But couldn't shoot his own head, drunk, I guess. Later, after he was actually dead from alcohol, Zelda perished in a fire at her institution, one of nine. Uh, yeah, one of nine. That's the beginning of this, like, fairly long poem about, wow. like, um, <clears throat> the last two lines. He's talking about, like, filming... Oh, wait, no. If I were to act in a film about Obama, all I would need to get down, aside from outer stuff, and I know that's important, is his essential kindness. I'd let the writer put in all the political crap and the specific things that he was up against, all that stuff on CNN and the Huffington Post, and I'd say the lines that were written just like Obama, read his lines, but what would really put the role over would be the goodness at its core. That's what will be remembered. Yes, his race no one will forget, but the soul, too. I'd win the Academy Award if I captured that. That's really weird. So, you're welcome. You have now heard James Franco's poetry. Um, Interesting. He is, Good thing he's an actor. I mean, he just... He also has, like, honorary degrees and stuff from, like... Like, you know, fancy schools. Okay. And I'm always like, why, out of all the people... All that to say, if you ever want to talk about James Franco, he is not my favorite... Also, I worked really hard to earn my degree, so it makes me annoyed when someone mm. earns a degree for that. Um, yeah. I'm like, uh, nope. He also did, like, an art installation that was super weird. I feel like you don't need to know that, but he did something that was, I can't even remember. Um, yeah, uh, no, I feel like you should just, if you really want to know. I'm not going to describe it. it. Just Google James Franco art installation, and immediately you'll be like, what? Oh. What? Oh. What? Yikes. Yeah. Um, it's Gotta real, be unique. Gotta be different. <laughs> really weird. Um, so anyway, uh, are you reading, listening, watching anything? Reading the Bible reading challenge. The latest podcast I listen to is Office Ladies, just like an hour. So I am so sorry. I turn away from the microphone and talk like I'm just talking to <laughs> I Courtney. I have, like, sign language for her. I, that I I'm really like... do sometimes forget we're recording. Cause it's I'm, okay. That's the best. Um, the most recent podcast I listened to was The Office Ladies because I was on a walk, like, a little while ago. And But I have been listening to um, Relatable a lot. She's going more, um, like, political. Like, she's keeping up with things, so it's yeah. really helpful for me yeah. to do that, listen to hers. And then Sheologians was really good this last episode. Oh, so yep, I just am finishing it, it was up. So, it was very, like, potent. <laughs> it was on critical yeah. encouragement theory. For me, personally, oh, because... Yeah. I oof. Yeah. Anyway, so I've been listening to those, and then um, reading the Bible reading challenge, and watching Survivor. And you know what's weird is I went back to season six. I've been watching all the newer seasons, and I don't necessarily, like, recommend the show, but I think it's really interesting, so I watch it. And I was absolutely shocked by how different the show was and how sexualized it was in the beginning yes now now i know it's still it like there are some women running around in bikinis but then also a lot of them choose to wear like athletic shorts and a sports bra out mm -hmm. there so it's not all it's not all of them like out there whatever season 6 or the i'm assuming it's just going to be the earlier season in general the women, like, the way they dress is horrible. But what's almost more horrible is the way that the men talk about the women. Oh. It is so raunchy. And so, like, they're really? so disrespectful. But also, these women are, like, 
like yeah it's bad was, that i was would, shocked that I would was not like, fly right now no it well that is what's so shocking to me the way that they talked about them and the way that the host almost like prompted them during tribal councils because it was a man group and a woman group uh-huh. tribe in the beginning it was just so shocking to me that they were sitting huh. there talking about like like picking apart like what parts they liked the best like physically tearing these women apart like it really wouldn't be acceptable now to do that I don't know like I was shocked That's by crazy. how different and it was just like normal like it was a normalized it nobody was like oh this is really disrespectful you know yeah nothing like that That's it's just very different from the more current yeah season. they all I don't know I well, know. I think I think now it's like you have to take women seriously, which I don't approve of that. I mean, wait, I don't approve of what would have happened in the earlier season, yeah. which I've never watched. Yeah, it, but like, well, there was a later season where I th- I can't remember exactly what season it was where this guy was like too touchy with the women, and they all kind of complained about it. They kind of like talked to each other and complained about it, and then finally one of the women. What, she was sitting there talking, like, they do these, they take a person, like, mm-hmm. off to the side, and they yeah. video them, and she was, like, crying about it, and the cameraman was like, you know, you can tell us if there's an actual problem, because apparently at night, he was, like, snuggling up too close to them and putting his arms around them, and they were really uncomfortable. He's, like, this 50-year-old guy, and there nope. were these young girls, and so they ended up kicking him off the show. Oh my god! Yeah, so it's just different because yeah. I feel like if that happened in season six, yeah, the, it just would have been yeah normal. I don't know. I'm sorry, I've talked no. way too much about this, but it was so shocking to yeah. me. Like, I guess Survivor can be inappropriate with like at least how the women are dressed. Not not so bad actually in the newer seasons, which is surprising. But I was just shocked by how much more inappropriate it was in the well, earlier seasons. Paul and I have talked, okay, kind of unrelated, but also, like, The Office, like, how, and I guess Paul told me that, um, Steve Carell said that The Office would not be yes. a thing right now. I heard that, too. And so you think, like, yeah, we, there's, there are some good things that have yeah, happened. Yeah, happened. I agree. Also, unrelated, do you ever, like, watch a show, like, The Office, and they make fun of a character, and they and then think like in the writers' room they had to discuss which character they were going to make fun of for like their physical appearance. And I'm I always thought like, I, oh, you know what I thought that the most about because I just recently watched through was when Pam was actually pregnant. Pam was actually pregnant in one of the seasons, and uh-huh. it's obviously which it's obvious that she was pregnant because she really looked pregnant. Uh-huh. Like she had the pregnant face. She yeah. gained weight. When she was fake pregnant, it was obvious she wasn't pregnant yeah. because she looked the same except she had a belly. And Angela calls her, like, she's like, our nicknames are Small and Biggie or something yeah. like that. And just, it like, there are a couple things like that that happen that's like, I'm like, oh my oh. goodness, that's her real body. Yeah. And then another scene with Angela is when they bring in brownies. Oh, Angela yeah. brings in brownies and they're like, oh my gosh, Angela, you yep. look so amazing after the baby. And then Pam has actually had a baby and is actually, yep. like, has still has weight. And I... Yeah, that's horrible. And it's just, like, that's whenever... Awful. At one point, they're comparing all the women in the office and they're talking about, like, Pam and they mention Karen and they, like, make specific comments about them. And I'm like, did they just sit there and they're like, okay, what can we comment on on Rashida. Yeah. Like, what can we say about her? What can we or talk about Jenna? They, like, in the weight loss episode where they're, like, Dwight's, like, I'm gonna pick a random... Yeah! Um, random people to go walk or... I can't remember exactly what he said, and he's, like, um... Phyllis Stanley Kevin. <laughs> like, all of those I people think, are obviously a little bit overweight, but... I, I'm sure that, like, being in that... Which, I guess, Phyllis... She was, like, a casting director, so she's not in... But at the same time, I think whenever you were probably in that environment for so long... You have to know, too, that that's... Like, just laugh at yourself and... That would be really hard for me, though, if I was pregnant and postpartum. Oh, yeah. That would be so so difficult. I'm sure that at that point, though, because it would have had to have been, like... It it was, like, in the later seasons that she knew them so well that I bet 
It was fine. Because if she hated it, she wouldn't be the, doing the Office Ladies True. podcast, I bet. True. Maybe we'll get that. Whenever the, they get to that episode, yeah. they'll discuss it. That's a ways like, down well, the... I think they're yeah. only in season two or three. Yeah. So. Um, but, yeah, so I guess I'll... What I'm reading, watching, listening to. So, I'm just restarted reading Doctrines of Grace by James Montgomery Boyce. Highly suggest it right now. I didn't know I was going to already love it so much the second go round. Um, and I'm reading a terrible teen book. One of those. <laughs> I'm reading Uglies by Scott Westerfeld, which I wanted to write my college thesis paper on. And now I'm rereading it. I'm like, this is stupid. So that's my review. I'm like, 50 pages in and that's my review um I am watching The Office I restarted it again um because when I watch something like that I turn it on and then I can walk away from it without I do that too so like if I'm cleaning or if I'm working I don't have to pay attention to it so um I just went ahead and restarted that and also I just started Virgin River, which I'm not going to suggest because I'm only a few episodes in. Okay. Um, but so far, it's kind of like a Hallmark movie and a TV show, which Sweet Magnolias There's, was like that. Okay, do you have Prime? Yeah. Okay. You, there are a few scenes, but really all in all, it's not that bad at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Pole Dark. I just bought the first season. It's on Prime? Yeah. Oh, well I just Courtney. bought it at Goodwill, like today, for okay. $3. That's really bizarre that yeah. I would bring that up watch it okay oh my i was goodness. you know that's a book series yes i yeah, do know that we, and there was by there was graham even, green i only know that because i've checked for it a million times Courtney. or wait maybe it's something graham so good i don't know it. but it is so good and i'm trying to think if there's any like real inappropriate well, I thought it was kind of like I, Downton Abbey. It is. Because it's it masterpiece, is. So isn't it? in the first season, all I can think of is there's just this one scene, and it's not even, like, detailed by any means. Like, I you hate, can hardly... T I get so annoyed, because <laughs> I would love to watch Game of Thrones. Like, that oh, seems like something I would I know. Love. I would I love know. to watch Outlander. Yeah. But I refuse, because... Yeah. I didn't know Outlander 2 was yeah. bad like that. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, I read, I read part of the book, or I listened to it, before I was a Christian, so, um, yeah. but it was, even the book was, I quit re listening well, to it. Well, watch Poldark, and okay. I'll rewatch it, and then we can talk about it, because yes, it's that good, Love I want to rewatch it. Love it. Um, so, listening-wise, I've been suggesting podcasts, which, I mean, by the time this comes out, they'll, I'll have already suggested everything, um or it'll, it'll all be gone. Although I guess I should make a highlight on our Instagram of podcast recommendations. I really enjoyed the episode on Joy from Sheologians this week. Um, very, very good. Very, very needed. Much more than when it was released. Um, the episode on perfectionism um, from Emma, always only um, she's my redemption for his glory. I've had her on. I don't know why I'm acting like nobody knows who she is. She's been on here before. Um, and then... My favorite thing that I've been listening to is Undying Light. Alex over there is doing his series on um, the attributes of God. Okay. And I was, I was actually on it with Emma. Um, we talked about the truthfulness of God or God's truth. I don't know. I always stumble on how to say that. But um, I really enjoyed that because, or I'm really enjoying the series because he's having all these people that I really like. So, specifically, Katie, um, she's the Berean Millennial on yeah. Instagram. He also had Leanne, who I had on um, a few weeks ago, Faithful Defender on Instagram. And it is just such a blessing to hear. Um, it's interesting that he's been having a lot of women um, just discussing these topics, um, back and forth conversation. And these are women that I just really look up to and that I... Um, just appreciate their ministry and to have these resources. Now, all of the episodes are good. Um, I've also, I have to say, um, so Alex from Undying Light, he is something on Instagram. I feel like I should know, um, but I can't remember. Uh, Reformation? 
Okay, never mind. We're just going to pretend like I didn't say that. So Alex from Undying Light. He also has a podcast with Anthony. I'm going to say this wrong. If I say this wrong, I'm so sorry. Anthony from Speak Gospel Truth. I think that's his name. Um, and it's called Matter of Truth. So good. They just pop on, answer questions. I actually sent them a question um, that they're going to answer at some point. Um but they just I just finished their episode with a guy that came out of Saddleback Church with with Rick Warren which I thought was interesting um but yeah other than that I also our pastor well I say our pastor I'm sorry my pastor Anna's dad um we got the sermons up on Apple Spotify and Podbean it's Lake Wildwood Baptist if you look that up um there's one that has our logo and says sermons really big because I had to tweak the graphic to get it to work. Um, so it looks a little weird, but that's what it is. Um, which I guess I should add that to our podcast. I don't yeah. know if I, I think I actually posted it today. So I'll make a highlight. Um, but yeah, I highly suggest he did one called one, Ra one race and why it matters a couple weeks ago. Um, that was very, I liked it because it was scientific. And it was very fact-based and not that I, I, I think that too often Christians will say, well, like, they try to separate science from scripture. Yeah. And he just melded it together, science and scripture together so well. Um, and I'm excited because he's going to continue this series um, on, it's, he did, that was the anthropology, um, then he's going to do one on her hermatology I think that's the word and then soteriology okay. which I'm a big fan of theology in church so um, yeah I think that's it but we will um, be back maybe next week we're actually not sure I'm out of town um, and I, I work Monday through Friday oh well hey <laughs> we're working gals um, <laughs> no so we might not have an episode the next yeah. Monday unless we decide to drop that other one that is True. on hold from the last week so yeah if not just keep checking in on Instagram we're there um, updating saying hi and all that jazz but until next time talk to y'all later